Just like the volcanic caldera, you can see the line of trees around what once was this lake that now has filled in and become the bog. Deep in the bog like this, a problem for the trees is that the moss in the bog holds so much water that these trees can't get adequate water in order to grow, which seems counterintuitive. There may be a distinction between the bog water that sits in the moss and the rainwater. Some trees, like these few here, may find what the guide calls a sweet spot and get access to rainwater and grow up a little bit farther. There's a series of little lakes in here which are interesting. Apparently this water, while it looks icky and uh, rusty, is very safe to drink because it's acidically pure. Yeah. Unfortunately I saw the same collar of water in cattle holes that I had to drink of of with my water purifier on the Oregon Trail. Estonia and Latvia are one of the most atheistic countries in the world. And Estonians, uh, what they really believe in and what they really admire is nature still. Because nature has been like a huge part of our, our culture and history. And, 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 and it is still. So, for example, the bogs. Our guide indicated that in the past, during World War II, they would end with the uh, Teutonian Knights. Uh, they would be asked to lead the Knights through the bog uh, because it was too dangerous for the Knights. So they'd lead them into the center and then just melt into the woods. And even today, archaeologists are still discovering the tools, the bones, the corpses, etc. of those tectonic, Teutonic Knights, as well as things from the Second World War, etc. I think this is the plant that has a very weird smell, so much so that it can give people headaches and on occasion hallucinations. Seemingly explaining why the original Aborigines believed that there were fairies and other hallucinations here in this bog. I wonder if this represents the literal center of the lake. A dried out little section, but notice the different ecology, uh, different plants in this little microecology, if, if that's what it could be called. I wonder how deep these bog holes are. It may not be relevant because once you sink down, you keep going down into the material that's at the bottom. You can see how the bog apparently distorts these trees. see a definite trail where larger animals are following the line of these lakes. So on the earlier bog trail, the areas to the sides, 
The walkway is sometimes heavily used. Imagine horses hitting this stuff for the first time in their lives and panicking. Guess is once you chew up this peat, it's chewed up and you can't walk through it a second time, so you can't even backtrack easily. It depicts the growth of trees or not, depending upon the drainage. There are relatively dry areas and a little bit higher. Interesting that the dynamic of peat moss holding on to so much water that it really damages the growth of these trees. And yet in Quito, they're prevented by law from building beyond a certain height of elevation on the mountains surrounding Quito because the moss up on top uh, collects so much rainwater and acts as, uh, in essence, a reservoir for Quito. It's really a pretty environment to hike through when you're on a boardwalk on a lovely day. This pond, of course, is filling in more rapidly due to not only what falls into it, but that scum that occurs on the surface and then probably dies and drops down onto the bottom, slowly filling it up. You can see how spongy it is. Some of the footprints are of animals that are heavy enough to sink right down into that. But apparently others don't need to sink that deep. Obviously not that long ago in biological terms, this went from pond to bog. We can poke through the trees and see that that pond swamp-like area is quite large back in there. Their trail comes in to meet our trail. The only butterfly that stopped long enough for me to get a look at it. We're going across the margin between the bog and the forest trees that you can see much higher ahead of the trees. Obviously larger, more robust. And here we climb up and out of the bog. That's that crane. We leave our bog after a very interesting, unique, pleasant walk. This is the tavern that we had lunch in on our tour of La Meja, La Jame National Park. The building was built and has been used since 1802. Now just to remind you, that's a year before we bought the Louisiana purchase and it was used when they had completed uh, the railroad I think or were working on it but we had lunch in this very real and authentic and original 1802 tavern and probably a guest house here and find out what's inside these doors it was built in response to the explosion of vodka production by the manor houses in this area and all along the major roads that connected manor houses uh, and this is where men would come after they had finished work and these are devices I think that are used for um, I forget what the term is but it's for separating the grain from the shaft this is the entrance to Sagadi uh, which is this manor house that's restored. At the beginning of 18th and during the 18th century. The, the, the earlier, earlier one was built in 1750, uh, then torn down, down, and this one was built in 1795. Uh, just because these people made such a colossal amount of money, usually with the vodka. 